everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is the well-organized and journaled Nikki Kinzer. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't know if I'm well-organized right now. Um, yeah. if you look at my house. <laughs> you don't, it's you don't. Like, it, well, because when we're recording this, it's the last day of school, and yeah. so my kids have brought home oh everything their classrooms. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I cannot believe. The stuff that they bring home. The books yeah. and the paper and, oh, mom, look at my pencil box that you bought me <laughs> at the beginning of the year. And uh, I, oh, let's see, my daughter had at least two lunch boxes that came home. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there's just like this stuff all over. It's on the island. It's on the side table. It's on the floor. You name it. We've got school stuff. That's I'm thinking, well, funny. gosh, what did you do all year? Like, why didn't you do any of this stuff? But <laughs> <laughs> you do this stuff. Well, I uh, we are we are going to be talking about uh, uh, journaling systems today. Uh, this yes. came in. We had a, a question some time ago now, and we just haven't quite gotten around to 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 addressing it uh, around the bullet journal. And we thought, what a great opportunity to talk about that and other journaling systems that are out there that you can uh, that that you might uh, find useful. So this is isn't quite a digital episode it's very much a tools episode how about that i like it uh and uh and so there you go before we dig in uh head over to take control adhd for the show notes you can listen to the show uh right there on the website or you can subscribe uh right to the mailing list make sure you get an email every time a new show is posted and connect with us of course on twitter and facebook at take control adhd you can leave us a voicemail at 503-664-4add we'd love to hear from you all right. So, do, do you use any sort of paper planner, Nikki? Not anymore. What did you do? You remember what you did use? Were you a paper planner person? Well, are you talking about a calendar, right? Well, or yeah, you a, know, well, uh, like he, a journal. Yeah, no, no. Well, I mean, it, so these days those things tend to be, you know, one and the same, right? That that a planner will include a calendar, or a schedule, a task list, and a, even a notes page for journaling. And and the systems that we're kind of used to are like Day Runner was hugely popular back in the day, Filofax. Um, See, and I think Day Runner might have been what I used. I don't remember, but I remember before I had the iPhone, yeah. um, before, you know, that <laughs> yeah. moment in my life right. where everything changed. Uh, prior <laughs> to that, I uh, used a, uh, yeah, it was a paper plan. And um, it was just something that you bought like a, at an office store and it had the the month. I don't even think it was the week. I think it was just the month. Um, and I know what you're talking about. It had all of like the notes and to do's and stuff like that. Prior to even that, like you know, a long, long time ago, I worked for a company who um, were really big on the uh, Covey system. Yes. Yeah, the Franklin Covey. The Franklin, Franklin yeah. Covey, yeah. Yep. And so they actually bought us, you know, a um, planner and taught us how to use it and everything. And I did that for a while. Uh, but then I left the company and they might have taken the planner away from me. I don't remember, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> but I stopped using it. I only used it during that time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely, I, I've always had to have some kind of calendar, you know, just to sure. kind of keep track of appointments and things like that. Well, but now it's all on the phone. Yeah, it's all electronic and that for the most part is me too and it's it's been an interesting kind of journey uh, that that I I know personally I've gone through because I I was a huge so I started with Day Runner. I loved my day runner, but I, this was, I was in high school. My mom got it for me. She thought it would help me kind of keep stuff straight. So I, I used that through high school. Uh, in college, I discovered Franklin Quest. This was, uh, it was actually before it became, before Covey bought them. So it was, it was Franklin Quest, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, and so I used that for years and years. And then I moved pretty much electronic, and I remember and have carried for many years that kind of ugh i'm i really miss writing my schedule i miss writing it but i also can't give up the convenience of having everything with me all the time i was very much a pen person yeah, i still am i'm very much a pen person i love having my little you know my little i've talked about my field notes i love having all those things with me and so having something that i can write on I, that tactile experience is really important to me so 
Well, actually, you know, it's just interesting that you bring that up because this is a conversation that I have with clients all the time when we talk about calendars, Yeah. Um, whether or not they want to do something more, you know, electronic or if they want to do the paper um, planning. Because I think a lot of people relate to what you just said. They They really would prefer to have something that they can write in and flip through and look at. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that is, uh, it's been a long journey. I, and so I, I've gone back and forth and, uh, uh, you know, this episode comes as a result of somebody asking a question about bullet journal, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, as a journaling system, um, which, which I like for many reasons, uh, though it, it brings its own set of complications and challenges. The real challenge is that, man, since, Day runner since Franklin Quests, Franklin Covey, these journaling systems have really pushed the boundaries on uh, between scheduling to straight up scrapbooking. Right um, mm-hmm. now, the accessories that come with these journals, and uh, you know, I was just kind of playing with Aaron Condren life planners and Kiki K planners, and and they come with these stickers and washi tape and these rubber bands and plastic sticky things. And oh, boy, like, I see trouble. Wow, I mean, Condren, <laughs> the, the Aaron Condren planners even pitch this mini wireless Polaroid sticker printer, so you can take a picture with your phone and print it out on your little printer that's in this little packet, this little. Uh, phone Folio with your planner so you can print out these pictures of your friends and stick them on dates in the th- I mean talk about I, it might be gorgeous it really might be so beautiful but for my ADHD yeah. brain that is noise and it distracts me from the function of the tool which is that managing is my the time. trouble that's yeah. right that's what I mean by trouble yeah absolutely like that is just a lot of noise yeah and there is so room for that in in our lives. I to- we're, we'll talk about that. I get it. There is room for that. But I really think it's important to really assess the function of of what the tool is doing for you. And so that's what I want. Most of them have have really adopted this uh, a, a a simple like spread. So we don't have to talk too in too much detail about. Um, you know, what goes into the kinds of pages that you you can get with these journals. There's a two-page weekly spread usually where you can choose between like horizontal or vertical. Horizontal would have like on your left page, it would be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on the right page would be Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday would kind of be in the bottom right. And so you'd be able to see your whole week and you can write your, your events and tasks in a horizontal layout. You might have a vertical layout where it's just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday straight across, you know, with the days at the top and columns. Um, and, and so that's your weekly spread. Then you'd have a monthly view, which is, again, usually a two-page spread on these systems. It's pretty standard templates that you get. And, and, uh, um, and, and so having those templates, just choosing the design and the colors, that's really what you get to do. Many have adopted the Franklin Covey uh, or the Franklin Quest uh, two-page spread daily view, which is my favorite. In fact, uh, you know, if you look at the, the left side page of the day of Franklin, it's, uh, it, it is, um, you know, we have really adapted much of that into the, you know, the daily schedule that we offer for in part of the download. So it's it's a similar thing with with adaptations uh that that I think improve it for for our use. Um but it it is it really works. It's a well-trod system. It allows you to have your tasks for the day, it allows you to have your hourly schedule for the day and it allows you on the right to have notes. Uh and then how you use the little symbols is really what defines the system. Um so so those are kind of the standard templates that you can get. The objectives with these things really it's to document your schedule, notes and time to make functional lists, to define and set goals in your life, and to represent your personality at some level, to collect this sort of raw idea, energy, whatever that looks like, if you're a doodler to create art, whatever it is, but uh, but to have this thing that allows you to transform these ideas into the the work that you need to do right and that's that's one of the that that's sort of the objective of these these kind of journaling systems so mm-hmm. we talked about the the franklin covey uh, it mentioned that franklin covey day planner is what it's called now franklin covey day planner originally it was franklin quest it has this bullet system and it really i i think uh it was the first to really popularize the bullet system 
uh, from, you know, they say Ben Franklin. We'll talk about that in a second. So really, you break up your tasks in terms of priorities where you, you make this little task list. And next to each task, it says, A, that's a, a vital priority task. And then B is an important task. And a C, it'd be nice to get this task done, but it's not really critical. If I don't get it done, I can move it and it, it won't be that big of a deal. It, so real quick, though, yeah. don't you think for the ADHD mind, it's either A or C? <laughs> yes, I, I really do. And, and yeah. particularly particularly troublesome is that in Franklin, they further subdivide these priorities yeah, into A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. Oh, my goodness. Like too that's complicated. too much. And I, I don't even know that it's A or C. Like it's just sort of a, stuff, sometimes. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like just it's not even a thing. So, it, you know, it, it either has a date when it's due and then it's A or it's everything else. You know what I mean? And that's that well, is it's so true because even the nice to get done then kind of falls because I did this. I did this exact same thing with a client a long time ago with her files, like, um, you know, here are your A files, your B files and your C files. And these were people files. Like yeah. these were work that she had to get done for people. And, uh, it, it, and the nice to get done just didn't exist. It, like it wasn't, it, if it was nice to get done, it wasn't ever going to get done. So why is it even on my list? Like yeah. we had to really define, what was vital and then what was next. That's right. That is exactly right. I think we we this, we have overcomplicated these systems in so many ways and we're going to talk about that in just a second. First the bullets because you know since all this came from as a question as a result of the bullet journal, I want to just walk through what the 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 bullets are in Franklin Covey's system. Uh do you remember the bullets? Do you have them kind of internalized? Well, kind of. I mean, like on the left hand side, right? Yeah. And you're talking about that's where you put your priorities, right? Well, it's, it's the on bullets? the. I it, can't remember. It's even further than that. So on the in the Franklin system, there are actually two columns next to a task, very small columns. And one, you put the priority. That's priority column. The A one, A two nonsense. To the left of that, you it, you is your bullet column, right? So a check next to a task means that task is completed. A right arrow next to the task means that task has been moved to a future date somewhere else. You'll, you've taken care of it. You've rescheduled it. A dot means, hey, I've started this task, but I didn't finish it. So I'm going to have to move that and push that to the next day. Uh, initials. And see, that's the thing I didn't, I, I, now you just triggered a memory yeah. because that was the thing that was really difficult about this planner is that you had to move things to the next day. Okay, so fasten your seatbelt because all these planners expect that. So yeah. get ready because that's a problem I have too. It's a real challenge. This dot, if you don't finish work, then then you have to manually go in and move to the next day and write that task again. There's a benefit to that, and we'll talk about that, but but it is a challenge too. Uh, the, uh, the last two bullets that you need to get used to, uh, initials with a circle next to it. So if, if, for example, you and I are working on something and I have a project or a task that is I'm going to delegate to you, I would put NK with an empty circle next to it and as soon as you tell me hey i've finished that i would check that circle which means okay. i've delegated it and when you're done you've finished it and i can check it off knowing i don't have to think about it anymore and then finally an x next to a task means uh this task doesn't need to be done after all it's it's i'm done with it it's done. Okay. so they say all of this is based on ben franklin's schedule it's not based on ben franklin's schedule ben <laughs> was a pragmatist and we screwed up ben franklin's pragmatism with complexity right mm -hmm. uh ben franklin's are i i think franklin quest or, or franklin Co are the best of breed when it comes to visualizing that complexity and keeping order within chaos. I like the two-page spread. They really default to more pages rather than fewer and compression. But if you look, scroll. I, I, I will post a note in the show notes, a picture in the show notes, with a picture of Ben Franklin's schedule. And I think we may have talked about this on the show. Um, Nick, if you scroll down the notes, you will see it, the first image in yes. our show notes. Mm -hmm. That is Ben Franklin's schedule. Can you describe Ben Franklin's schedule? Well, the, the first question starts with the morning question. What good shall I do this day? That sounds very It's such a Ben Franklin-y nice. awesome yes. question. He's going to rise and he's going <laughs> to wash himself. But that's nice. At least he was clean. Yes. Um, and uh, have some breakfast, work, read, work, put things in their places, uh, music, sleep. And then the evening question is, what good have I done today? Yeah. So kind of, yeah, that's kind of ending the day, right? Right. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. 
pretty it's basic. It's very simple. It's, it, yeah. it's two columns. It's got the hours down the middle from 5 a.m. when he rises. Uh, he addresses his powerful goodness. Right. Uh, that is uh, his, his prayer time. He's addressing God. Oh, right. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, he contrives the day's business and all of that is from five to seven. He works from eight to eleven. And there is no detail about what that work is. That's the, the thing to note. It just says work. Right. Mm-hmm. It, until eight, from eight to eleven or to noon. And then he dines right from twelve to two. And then he works again, and there's no detail in there, right? There's no A1, B1, C1. There's none of that. It's no. He's going to sit down and do the work that's in front of him. And at the end of the day, he takes four hours to put things in their places to supper, music, and conversation and examine the day. And then he sleeps. And sleep is on his calendar. And this is very inspirational for me. This is how I did my ideal daily schedule. I was going to say, this kind of looks like this a little bit, right? I I find a lot of good in this schedule. And I love that he has so much space in the left column. It's almost a full 50% of the vertical page of these two questions. What good shall I do today? And what good have I done today in the evening? I love that that's on every page. That just a very simple, set of questions. I don't need inspirational quotes. I don't need anybody else's thoughts. I want to ask those questions of myself. So that's Ben Franklin's schedule, and I think it's really valuable. Uh, Wolf and Iron, uh, the guys at Wolf and Iron have actually adapted Ben's schedule, and they have created something that's that is three columns instead of two. Now, the, I've never heard of Wolf and Iron. Is this another yeah, it's planning? A, it's a, it's a planner. A, you know, it's a it's like a men's kind of website. You know, they do shaving supplies and all this stuff. And this is like it manage your day uh, over mm-hmm. at Wolf and Iron. And, and so they're not necess- specifically planning people, but I like that they were inspired by Ben Franklin, and they kept this schedule pretty simple, too. Uh, So they've gone from two to three columns, and the thing that they added to it is a to-do today bullet list, right? Just says, Mm -hmm. you know, in addition to work, maybe I need to take the kids to the doctor. Maybe there are, like, you know, maybe there are tasks in, in our admittedly possibly more complex life and, and times today that Ben Franklin wasn't thinking about and uh, that, that we do want to document on some way. But it's still a one full page weekly sk- or weekday schedule that allows you to keep it simple. And, and I, you'll have this in the show notes. Yeah, I'll put this in the see, show right? notes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you can the, the guys over there have offered it up as a free download. Uh, they call it the Franklin Update. And uh, I'll put the sh- direct links to the PDF in Excel uh, nice. so you can go read their post. I really like that idea. I like that idea of just, you know, it's 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 not a complete like, oh, my gosh, I, I need a full page, um, but I need it dated perfectly. I need every day documented. I need a binder. I need washi tape. I need stickers. Like, it's just very simple, 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 simple. Okay. The uncalendar, I don't even know what to say about this. This, uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, Nikki, you can, you'll see this picture of, of the uncalendar templates. There are so many colors and boxes on here. I, it makes my eyes burn. So what is what are they implying when they say uncalendar? Like you're not a traditionalist in maybe you don't want to follow a calendar. So this is a different system for you. Is that what they're implying? I guess yet one of their template pages is a monthly calendar. So I don't know how it could be an uncalendar if it has a calendar. But w- this really if there's a continuum between structure and uh, sort of design liberty. This is as far on the structure side as you can get, right? Everything is boxed and highlighted and graph papered and in like it is labeled. You can do anything you want on these things within these boxes. Uh, I find it, it is absolutely dizzying and crazy making to even think about putting together a binder with all these pages. But uh, it, for my brain, again, ADHD brain, if there is that much noise in the system itself, there is too much noise for me to actually keep my day on it. Well, and I'm just wondering how long term this would really fit for people because, you know, you 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 want to have a system that that works for you and something that you can use consistently where you're not going to feel like you want to jump ship you know, immediately. And yeah. so I'm just wondering how long this would really work. Like, it, you know, the, the, the novelty of it might be really great at first. Like, Oh, I love the colors. I love the boxes. This is great. But I just don't know if people would really continue 
updating it and using it would be my concern. Yeah, right, right. I, I agree with you. And I, you know, for me, the, the colors are the pro- biggest problem is the colors are like weirdly uh, selected. They're they're non complementary colors. And so it really makes it feel like they're shooting lasers into my eyeballs. Well, it looks like an elementary school. Um, it, it really does. Planner, yeah, it does. Right. I it mean, does. because it just the primary colors that they have, it really does look more like school oriented. Yeah. In a way. But yeah. But but well. if you want, I mean, if you want rails, you know, on which to ride every day, this these are the rails. And this this represents, again, a very strict um, uh, com- way to schedule. Uh, and and that is in direct contrast to the bullet journal. I am so looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this. I have had clients, at least two for sure that I can remember that have said, Hey, do you know anything about this? And what are your thoughts on it? And do you think this would work for me? And I, I don't know, Pete, I mean, cause it's not something that I have ever tried. So what do you think? Well, Does it work? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. First, let's talk about what it is, because what what Bullet Journal is not is a system that you have to purchase. It is more, I would call it more of a of a journaling uh, system ideology, right? It's a language. Uh, the language is called the. It, the, it was invented by Ryder Carroll. Uh, he's the the sort of originator of the Bullet Journal. But Bullet Journal can do whatever you need it to do. The very basic system includes a number of components that we'll walk through. The language is called rapid logging, uh, and it includes a, a number of, of elements. Topics, page numbers, you number every page, short sentences, and bullets. And those all go into any journal you want. You could buy a Moleskine, you can buy a Leuk term, whatever, uh, that I can't think, uh, Leuk, German company, Leuk term, <laughs> Leuk term. I, I don't I, know. I'm terrible at that. It, it sounds Maybe okay. Dutch. It's I, it's, good. it's it's it's, <laughs> it's I, my language skills do not do it justice. Beautiful paper. You can choose whatever book you want to put it in. Once you learn the language of rapid logging, you have a bullet journal. Okay, so that I think is a is a first misconception when people hear bullet journal, they think, oh, I got to go to Barnes and Noble to their journaling thing and buy a book and you, ask for a bullet you journal. Ask for a bullet journal. Yeah. You, no, you you either have a bullet journal because you know how to do it or you don't. And here's how you do it. The root of the bullet journal is in, of course, as you can probably predict, the bullet. And you might see some similarities here. A task is represented by a dot. On that dot, if the task is complete, you put an X over it. If the task is incomplete, you put a right arrow showing that you've migrated it to another day. You put a left arrow if you've scheduled it actually on your calendar at some point with with time associated with it. I got to tell you something right away. Oh, I can feel it. Go ahead. Okay. Dot. Like that idea. I'm all over bullets. Dots like, are I, good. I oh, really just, like you bullets. haven't even heard the half of it. You're already up in arms. I know. Right. <laughs> so I like dots and I like the, the X. Right. Yeah. I like putting the X. I love crossing stuff out. Like oh, I yeah. use a little highlighter and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, done. yeah, all over it. Woohoo. Uh-huh. But those left and right arrows, I can tell you right now, out the window, wouldn't use them. All right. Stay but tuned. But that's just me. Stay and, stand by. So now we've migrated and scheduled. But what about events? Right. Events are marked with an O, a circle dot uh, a, a bullet. All events have the same way in the method uh, weight in the methodology of the bullet journal it's really important to get your language down because the the idea is and according to carol uh movie night has to have the same weight as best friend moved away right you you just have you can't associate emotional weight with the language you use in your bullet journal it's got to be short 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 and sweet that's an event an event has an o uh, a note is a dash and a note is is something that you want to remember but is not immediately actionable. So you can you can see how this list is starting to come together. You have dots, you have x's, you have o's and you have dashes and they all mean different things. So um you know, things that you might want to remember but aren't immediately actionable, a dash next to that might be um uh my daughter built a rope ladder today. Right now, I have something that is marked on a day that has a note. I don't need to do anything about that rope ladder. It's just something I might want to remember. That's a note that goes into my bullet journal. And now, to add complication, and I mean that in the terms of like a watch face, to to enhance 
the bullet, we have signifiers. An asterisk next to a bullet, event, or note gives it a priority. An exclamation point represents inspiration next to that. So maybe this rope ladder is an inspiring thing. So I might put exclamation point dash daughter built a rope ladder, right? And finally, an eyeball, that's right, an eyeball or an eye represents something that requires further research. An eyeball. Yeah, you actually draw a little eye. If you if you if you are using the original, yeah, like you could go. right, you could go for all the way, blue eye, green eye, whatever. So okay. so those are the those are the bullets, right? Now the bullets are used across the modules of the bullet journal. As you're building your module, your bullet journal, this is this is what that's going to look like. Now you know we have uh, four different kinds of bullets or or complications for those bullets, and in the modules. This is what you, they're, they're going to look like. The first. What do you mean module? All right. Like, so I think open... of a module and I think of my organizing. Class. I know you do. I know you do. So this is this is the, they're using the term module to define sections of the bullet journal. The index is the first few pages. So you you turn a few, the first few pages, index at the top, and you are going to be writing the topics and collections by page number. So it'll be you know May monthly spread, and that'll be page eight. And then, you know, so uh, May daily pages are page, you know, 10 to 50. Uh, and so you're, you're actually keeping an index page, like a table of contents of your bullet journal. So if you're, a, if you're a technician about the bullet journal, the index is the first few pages. So you can always jump to page numbers as you need to. Uh, the next module is the future log. Uh, and so you'll include the future log, which is essentially you take you take uh, uh, each page left and right and you split it into thirds. And so and then you'll put each third is a month. So January, February, March on the left page, April, May, June on the right page. Next page has the next six months. And that's what you're where you're capturing future things that you're going to need to integrate into your daily schedule for that month. And uh, so it'll be, you know, I need to pay my property taxes, my second quarter property taxes. That'll go in a certain, you know, whatever month that is. So it's a, it, it's something that you're collecting for some future month that is not immediately actionable. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice. But again, you're going to, ha- at the end of each month, you've got to go through now your future log and make sure you're integrating that into your monthly schedule. That's the next module, the monthly log task page, and that's a two-page spread. So now to create the monthly log, you open up two blank pages. At the very top of the left page, you'll write January, and down the left column, you are writing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, one line each, one through thirty-one. That's your monthly log. On the right page is your monthly task list, the tasks that you're going to need to accomplish sometime that month, right? Those are sort of the bigger projects, the bigger things that you're going to need to accomplish. So you have this two-page spread that says, on the left is my monthly log, and on the right page is my monthly task list for high-level tasks. Okay, so I just want to, I think I may have missed something. Mm -hmm. Now, you had said at the very beginning that this is not a product that you have to buy, but I'm kind of feeling like, where do you get these logs and stuff? Is this something you create? You are handwriting them, Nikki. So this is all, this is you creating it off of this like system. Okay. 100%. That's what I said at the beginning. Once you know the language of of the bullet journal, you can put it in whatever book you want. You are handwriting all of this. So keep that in the back of your mind because I have a feeling you'll have an op- opinion on that. Uh, after Maybe. the after the daily log, right? Uh-huh. And the task page, that two-page spread for a given month, you turn the page and you begin your daily log. And the daily log, it starts right after the monthly log task page. You enter a date uh, at the very top corner and a day, maybe. You can decorate it however you want. And then you start your bullets, right? So you start your tasks and, and meetings and events for the day. And they're all very short sentences. And they have their little bullets next to them. Remember, their bullets are going to be a dot or an X if it's complete or a migrated or a scheduled or an O for an event or a note with a dash and then an asterisk, an exclamation point or an eyeball. And that it just becomes a bulleted list using those symbols that allow you to build your day. At the end of the day, the next, you know, Give a little space and then begin tomorrow. Any tasks you did not complete from the day prior, you move to the, you write again to the next day. 
At the end of a given month, you go through all of your days, you look for any tasks that are incomplete, you migrate them to the next month, uh, and, and you begin the whole process again. And that migration process is actually really important uh, to move tasks from month to month, to strike out irrelevant tasks, and to update your monthly log and your index accordingly. So, that, Which is true in anything, it, in it any kind true. of planner. It yeah, is true in any kind of to-do list. Uh, mm-hmm. Right. You've, you've got to do that anywhere. Now, pros of the bullet journal. If you're keeping up with all of the writing that you have to do with a bullet journal, you have a daily investment in your activities, right? You are handwriting every activity that you're doing. And at the end of each day, the act of writing the task again cements the importance of that task. If it's something that you're responding internally to saying, I don't even want to migrate this. Maybe it's not a task that you need to do. Maybe you just need to cross it out right? Strike it out. It's not an important thing. So you really are doing that, you know, that part of that getting things done style uh, reflection every day. And and that's an important thing. I, I, I don't think we can underscore that enough. Yeah, it's yeah a, I agree. Right. Um, there is a robust history of events. If you are a, a zealous uh, bullet journaler, you you have a really great kind of history of events and tasks that you have been so personally invested with by writing them down that you you're you're internalizing a lot of your history. Uh, I think really well. Um, there is no limitation in hours per day, right? I mean, if you go to one of the form systems, right, like a like Franklin Covey or uh, you know Day you're Runner, or, you're, you're restricted. Yeah, you're yeah, restricted you by what they the put on their template, and that's right. that is a limitation, absolutely. Uh, you get to choose your own tools, right? Paper, pens, binders. If you want to make it a scrapbooky thing, you can. Uh, but you can also be as minimalist as you want. There are some great examples of people who are minimalist bullet journalers and who have gotten a shorthand down that they understand and they live and love and it keeps them right on task and it's very, very lightweight. That's super important, I think, for a lot of people is to, is again, to simplify. There is much more room to make this system your own in that regard, right? Personality, creativity. If you look at how people bullet journal, the kinds of collections that they that they add, you know, you can add these collections. Like it's more like a, just sort of a list of tasks that are related to one another, but not necessarily a date. So like diet lists or exercise logs, that kind of a thing. There's a a great example of a woman who wrote down all the symptoms of illness and the dates that her kids were sick and out of school. And with that monthly view, she went back and she just sort of noticed patterns of sickness and was able to uncover kind of allergies. And, uh, you know, it was it was a really kind of a cool story about how the bullet journal helped her visualize something that she hadn't seen before. So uh, it's really handy to have those kinds of collections. Uh, And and so, you know, you can make it your own. The 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 way people have taken bullet journals this the, again the spectrum of just sort of minimalist bullet journal to work of art bullet journal it's very very broad so there's a lot of flexibility there the cons though for me is uh, a too much cognitive load in having to maintain the system in addition to keeping my personal data updated inside the system Right. For me to have to write the days of the month before I schedule something out or to create my I'm just going to let that go. I will forget. And then there will be something that's important that I need to write down for June. But I'm not close enough to June. I haven't created my monthly future task list yet. And then I'm back on post-its and stickies. And uh, that cognitive load, that cognitive deficit that comes from having to prepare my own system, it would it, it's just too much for me. It's absolutely too much. I just am not wired that way. Uh, and, you know, I also think as insofar as, you know, you have this robust history of your journals as a pro, it's also kind of a con, right? Your history never disappears. Like you can't just say, I'm, I don't, you know, it's always, you're always looking back in order to look forward. And that, that's a little bit of a, of a frustration. Um, if, What's your sense of it? I mean, I know having not having used it, um, you know, just hearing me talk about it. What's your sense of how it would work? Well, this is my sense of it, and it's very similar to how I feel about um, GTD with Dave and Allen's system. Um, I love pieces of GTD, and then, but I think as an overall, if you were to do it exactly the way that he says, you know, he would like you to do it, I don't think it's very ADHD friendly. Yeah. Um, but there's pieces of it that are so important. And, and I totally think 
are, you know, ADHD friendly. So when I talk to clients about his specific system, I pull the pieces that I think are really relevant. And we talk about that. And that's how I kind of feel about this is that I think I see the whole system and I see what you're talking. And I'm really glad that you kind of went through it all because I didn't know that that's what it was. Um, I think there's pieces here that I like. I like the bullet. I like bullet. I uh, like bullet. I like bullets. I like, like bullet. I, I sounds really <laughs> crazy, but I do like bullet points, right? I mean, I think that it just makes things very clear. I like the short sentences. Let's not go into paragraphs. Let's just, you know, what is it that you need to do? Yeah. Um, put that behind the bullet point. I like the the X with the task being completed. I like the short sentences. Um, I don't really think that I care too much about what I want to remember, but aren't actionable. I, I that doesn't, that's not important to me in my to-do list. Like I, I would want that stuff out. Yeah. Um, again, I don't like the task migrated and scheduled. I would never do that. Um, I like the little star, you know, I like having it be prioritized, you know, ha- or mm-hmm. having it stand out as a priority. Sure. Inspiration doesn't really mean anything to me. The eyeball doesn't really mean anything to me you kind of lost me with the whole modules. Like I'm just thinking, Oh man, that's just a lot of work. Um, I just like having a daily log, like just give me the daily log with my bullet points of the things that I have to do. Let me cross them off. Um, and yeah, yeah. It's, also, again, it's that, it's that spectrum, right? Of, uh, yeah. yeah. And I would even extend that like, okay, so let's take pieces of this bullet journal idea, But as I've said in other um, podcasts and blog posts, when we talk about to-do lists, I would recommend that you just take that one item, that one most important item for the day, going back to the original um, Ben's schedule, you know, what, what am I going to do today? What, what good shall I do this day and choose one thing and put that on a piece of paper and focus on that until it's done and let all the other stuff you know, hide for a little while because that could be a huge distraction. So I don't, you know, I think there's pieces of it that are great. And then I think there are pieces of it that I just, I personally don't think I would follow through with. Well, to that point, there is a fantastic Instagram account, Instagram account.com slash minimalist Bujo bullet journal Bujo. You, you're really, you're a Bujo hipster. You're a bullet journal hipster. <laughs> if you know, if you call it Bujo. Go to Minimalist Bujo on Instagram and follow that, and you will see pictures of what people do with their bullet journals and just how flexible they can be and and how complex. I mean, there are people who actually do draw a monthly calendar each month, right, with all the days and the grid, and you can see that. And there are people who don't do any of that. So it is really uh, flexible and can still be called a bullet journal. I mean, there are people who do a complete bullet journal system in a in a small field notes notebook. There are people who do it in an eight and a half by eleven, you know, full spread uh, book like sketchbook. So it it has a lot of flexibility, and so it's probably worth investigating. I think the big lesson for me is watch how much noise you inject into the system um, that doesn't directly impact your objective for the system. And for me, it's it's managing my time and activity. And anything beyond that uh, is is going to be difficult for me to maintain over time. I just know that about myself. And I know that that I will... It is very easy to me to go, for me to go one way or the other. One, I'm either going to completely drop the system because I don't want to keep up with all the writing of the you know headings and the daily days and weeks and months... Or I will become completely system obsessed and I will forget to actually do the work, right? I'll write right. so many headings out to the year 2020 and then I will forget and I actually have to, to do some work during the day. Well, yeah. I mean, you're, you're getting distracted from yes. something that's really not that important. I mean, yeah. right. It's the minutia of the 
of the pl- of the bullet ju- journal right, <laughs> that's, right. that's distracting you from actually um, maybe doing the actual work. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I do like that I didn't mention is I do like the no limitation in the hours per day. I do think that's kind of good because I think that some people do feel really restricted when they have to decide if this is going to be done at two o'clock or four o'clock. So, I mean, I think that having some flexibility with when that gets done um, yeah. is helpful for people. But, you know, I'm going to go back to just, I think what I was saying with GTD, and with the bullet journal. And even if you follow um, any of uh, Brian Tracy's things or, you know, all of these productivity systems, they, they all have good things in them. And I think that the point is just trying to figure out what works best for you and yeah. what pieces of it can you take and adopt. But no, like you said, that you can have flexibility. It doesn't have to be exactly the way they wrote it out to be. And I don't even think that, you know, they probably mean it to be that way all the time either. They want flexibility in those types of um, productivity tools and strategies and such. But I think that's the key is playing around with it, seeing what works, what sticks. I'm with you, Pete. I think minimal min- minimalist is better than too fancy because then mm-hmm. you just get really distracted. Um, but I, you know, I, I do think there's pieces of it that are good for sure. Well, the, the last note, which I'll post in the show notes is the, you know, for those who really are, are not minimalist people there, there are, I, I absolutely respect those who, who use that sort of create their, their daily journal as a creative outlet. Right. And, yeah. and if you're interested in, and, and, and want to be inspired by this, check out the documented life project, uh, which is essentially an online sort of class and community you kind of pay into for a couple bucks. And then you, you have access to all of these artists and experts who are doing really inspirational things with their daily journals and uh, making beautiful, beautiful, like I said, works of art out of their their daily journaling process. So uh, it's it can be as inspirational or as pragmatic as you choose. And I think that's really important. I think I personally, I use the bullets just about every day. I use, I do use the See, dots. You and like I use the bullets the, too. I use the like dots the and dashes and checks yeah. and circles. I do that stuff. I yeah. don't do anything else. Uh, and so... You know, yeah. there you go. That's it. That's what I've got. I like it. Good. Thank you. I hope this that was very useful. good. Very good. helpful. Yeah. Now I know what it is. Yes. Now you know what it is. Now you can talk about it. Uh, talk about it, it. it. It is very useful. And, and again, uh, check out the show notes. I'll put links to all of the little pictures that I was sharing with Nikki here so you can see them uh, along with links to the uh, to the uh, some of the websites that I used to to look at this. Some of the inspirational examples of great bulleting bullet journal systems. There you go. Thanks, everybody, for downloading and listening. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.